Good morning, folks. Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering with another tip of the day. We just got here this morning getting ready to get started, and the contractor come out and he says, well, Kirk, can you match this? I said, well, a little late to ask me now. We already scratched everything, but of course he knew my reaction was piece of cake. Yeah, we can match it. Can, does the camera show this right here, Jay? And these, you see this, guys? Can any of you folks see what this is? Because he says, well, can you put these in? <laughs> I said, yeah, we can put those in, but it's going to take like 60, 70 years. And he says, why is that? I said, man, that's peeling paint. That's what happens. This building, first of all, is about 90 years old, and it has possibly 20 to 30 coats of paint when you consider the primer as well as the paint. I said, this was paint that was applied right here, these little spots, and then the paint peeled off. Kind of like this right here, the paint's peeling off, so that's what creates that look right there. And no, a plaster cannot duplicate this. But what they did here was they, they applied a scratch in a brown coat, and then they floated it. That brought out the sand or aggregate. And throughout the years, with say 20, 30 coats of paint on it, it smoothed it out a, quite a bit. Here's, here's one thing I tell folks. What we'll do is we'll do the scratch and brown coat, and then we'll come and float it because we have to bring out the aggregate but after that what we'll do so they don't need 20 30 coats of paint to match a finish similar to this is we'll take a, a steel trowel and then we'll just lightly hit it we're just not hard but we'll just barely grab that trowel and lightly hit it and we'll achieve this this uh, soft look this soft look right here is because of all the paint but we'll duplicate that with a trowel instead of saying, gee whiz guys, put 20 coats of paint. I said, are you happy with this patch right here? And he said, what patch? I said, that means you're happy with it. We'll do just as good as that. And the last thing I want to point out is if you look at this, this is old world a craftsmanship. What does that mean? That means somebody took a hawking trowel and just put the finish on and then they floated it and left it alone. That way it's not true and plumb in every direction because you can see all the humps and bumps. So we can, well, we can match that when we get to the other side and get busy. We're going to take the first two levels down. And then at the very bottom level, I'll show you how to, how to match this. Because, guys, this is about as common a situation as you have. Then they got these little areas on the bottom here. Anyway, we're going to get started. Um, it's kind of chilly, so we've got to get warmed up. All right, guys, since I'm out of mud... I'll show you on a wall what I was referring to earlier. What you do is you apply your, your second coat. Now this is still a little too wet to actually uh, show what I wanted to. I just put it on. How wet is it? Let's see. Blam, blam. I'm too wet. Okay, we'll just disregard that right there and do it anyway because I have the ability to. All right, what we do now, we're going to match a finish that is 80, 90 years old. Why is it so old? Because it's actually a horse carriage. This was built for a horse carriage in the Berkeley Hills areas, just like in the Jack London days. All right, so you figure 100 years old, actually 2000, it's maybe 120 years old. So how do you match a finish that has, say, every 10 years been painted twice, so this has like over 20 coats of paint, I'll show you. First you put it on and you don't, because this is a wavy finish old world style, I'm, my habit is to put it on straight. And this looks pretty straight, but what you don't see is I took my trial and I kind of just went like this. And when I'm going like this, I'm putting humps in it. I'm putting bumps in it. You can't see it, but the humps and bumps are, are there because if I'm not looking, I can see that's a wavy wall. All right, once you got that, wet your float. And this green sponge float is designed to bring out the sand or aggregate. So what we want to do is float the wall now. And this is what they did way back then. They floated it. And because they applied it by hand, there were no machines back in the 1900s, early 1900s, that put stucco on. Here's the machine right there. That's the machine. So you, you go ahead and float it. And after you float it, that's again, this is just bringing out the sand. It's called a sand finish. And there are sand finishes that you do that are perfectly straight. And there's the sand finishes that 99% of the houses are done. That's by hand, and there are no 
means flat and true and plumb in every direction. They are hand applied, which uh, unless you're a, a genius and you're using rods, there's no way to get them perfect, guys. If you look in the sunshine, you'll see some imperfections here. If you look in the sunshine and the work that's already done, you'll see twice as many. So here's what we want to do. We want to make it a little uglier. And I can just go sideways here, guys. Now this is not showing. I'm actually wiggling. I'm holding the, the float wiggling. And so I give it some humps and bumps. And now here's what to do. Because it's been painted so many times, if it's been painted more than, say, 10 times, I want to soften it. I don't want to leave it like this and say, okay, there you, there you go, guys. When you paint this, give it 20 coats of paint. That's, uh, that's goofy. What we want to do is match the finish so where it's primed and painted like it's supposed to, it matches as close to as possible. Okay, now we take a trowel and we just lightly hit it with a trowel. And we, we're skipping it, basically. And that's what the paint does. The paint softens almost, well, the paint softens the sand in an old finish. And there you go. Now to get my joint, I'll press a little harder. And if I see some aggregate sand, I just take the trowel, scrape it off. Scrape that off. Boom. And that's how it's done, guys. And this way you say, gee, just use a, a primer and a paint and you got what your uh, finish used to be. There it is. As simple as that. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera and he's spreading also. We thank you for watching and as usual, guys, live long and plaster. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.